Greetings in the name of the Most High. It is Zeph Daniel and the Zeph Report. Welcome. We are here. This may be my third attempt at a podcast. I'm going to have to watch this very carefully while we're trying to record here. Um, We like the app. And the reason we like the app is because... um, The quality of the sound, the quality of the voice, uh, the quality of the uh, intensity of the transmission, some of the nuances, resonances, and things that are in my voice naturally for whatever reason as a gift uh, come through better than the other one. But we've had some malfunctions. I did an hour podcast that turned out to be 57 seconds. I did a two-hour podcast that turned out to be eight seconds. Now, I've rebooted the phone, and it's on, it's on a phone, but it takes advantage of the exquisite, excellent um, uh, iPhone uh, microphone, which the other one didn't do. So let's uh, see what we can do here, and uh, I'm going to try again. Well, number one, you know, the, the, the research is pretty much in on uh, ISIS and, you know, the fact that it's uh, spearheaded by the United States, but then some 40-odd countries uh, have given uh, to it. It's a, it's, a big open, it's a big open sore right now. The mainstream news is not dealing with the, with the information that's flooding in all around them. Eventually, they'll have to. That uh, ISIS is a dirty piece of shame for this country. And the fact that we, as taxpayers, have funded the beheading of Christians is absolutely unacceptable And the people that created ISIS and sustained it need to go to jail. And ISIS needs to be killed. As I said before, months ago, this is what the program would end up being. Here you see the fulfillment of that completely. If that is right, I'm going to assume then, you know, that's that's all I could do is, you know, cautiously, that the rest of it will come due. That there is a fight between the Albert Pike people Okay, the Albert Pike, New World Order, Luciferian New World Order, New Atlantis, uh, get the Muslims to kill the Christians and the Jews, then wipe out uh, the, the Muslims in the end and just have a Luciferian uh, a global government and state with a lower population of slaves and uh, the elites playing in the fields of Elysium with life extension technology, just like the film Elysium. Okay, versus equilibrium which, is, which is, um, goes with God's laws and is wise. It's almost between light and dark or between you know, the angels battling it out here through people. But the edict came down. Obama was told. Uh, the Pentagon was told. Everyone was told that you, know, you could just collapse that stupid statue of Pike, throw it in the garbage can because we're, everyone's on to him and on to you and on to this whole thing. It's not going to work. And there is no... Uh, th- even if they could have their way today, push a button and have it, they would all be dead because without the equilibrium, without the host, the parasite cannot survive. I have told you this again and again and again and again and again, and it's, it's absolutely a truth. At the same time, a lot of people believe that this negative way, or the Masonic way, if you will, it, to bring in um, world government of uh, Lucifer uh, under a complete total tyranny, uh, as, as a solution and a, and a lovey-dovey affair with life uh, that these geniuses have uh, concocted for themselves and for you and me. Uh, the idea that that would somehow be acceptable or that that would somehow be doable can only come from think tanks that don't think, from social engineers that can't engineer their own um, fly. You know, there are people that just can't seem to get it. And again, we're going to keep really, you know, stressing this point. I talked about equilibrium. Other people have talked about equilibrium in all social systems. Uh, they're not separate from nature. It's the same everywhere throughout every, in, in everything that we perceive in this dimension. Um, it's it just, uh, you know, if it were me, ISIS wouldn't even be there anymore. It's a matter of uh, not only the raids that they're conducting in, in France now with the good cops as opposed to the bad cops that may have aided and abetted this whole thing. The good cops are trying to find the people and are you know killing people and breaking things to find them. They need to arrest all ISIS people, not just someone that was there 
perpetrating the event or the PSYOP or whatever you want to call it. They need to get all people that are of ISIS, any and all radical Muslims, and put an end to them. Period. I don't mean put them in jail. I mean put an end to them. I mean mow them down. You know, now, I, I'm, I'm also got another word. Uh, I don't care about collateral damage. So you get the unradicals with the red, just mow them all down. It's really, it's either that or, or don't survive. So I think the choice is pretty clear. Same thing with the, in the Middle East. Um, you know, in other words, I wouldn't worry about collateral damage. I would just go in and I would get every Muslim I could find that, that is in uh, France and, you know, try to separate out the good law-abiding citizens from the perps uh, as best I can. But at the end of the day, I'm taking out ISIS, whether it's in Europe or whether it's in Syria or whether it's in Iraq, and, uh, you know, tactical nukes, fine. You know, broad sw swath, great. Collateral damage, f f drop leaflets, tell them you got 24 hours to get out of here, uh, or they're, or, you know, or they become glass. And, uh, you know, as far as domestic issues are concerned, you know, this whole uh, George Soros, uh, fat old men, um, racist division, uh, working for fat old white men, uh, Black Lives Matter, working for fat old white men. I just don't see how you could do that. Why don't you form another cause and, and don't let fat old white men influence you to be racist so you think you can get something teaming up with Mizzou and all that. That's become some kind of a joke. So nobody takes that seriously and there's no point for me to talk about it. You know, it's just, it's absolutely just, you know, spoiled brats on steroids. Uh, screaming, yelling, wow, 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 baby wants a, another cookie. You know, it's well, then you're going to have to go out and get it for yourselves, like everybody else. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's time for that tough decision. And uh, unfortunately, we have a guy in the White House who wants to bring these people in, and he wants to have terror events here because that way he can confiscate the guns. It's very, very simple. Uh, and, the, and, you know, the overall plan is for world government, you know, overwhelm and horrify people with all the beheadings and Hollywood productions all the way, by the way. Oh, that'll come out. That'll come out. Wag the dog is coming out. Whether you, whether you like it or not, it's going to come out. It's actually better for the, the perps that it come out because if it didn't come out, they will wind up dead. So it's going to come out. Well, they may wind up dead anyway, but I mean, it's going to come out. You know, there's just, uh, I just don't really have any tolerance for traitors in this country. You know, anyone that participates as a crisis actor, anyone that uh, participates in the, you know, these shootings, uh, all this uh, false flag stuff, anyone who participates in that stuff needs to be tried for treason and executed, period. And that's the end of the story. And, uh, you know, and if, if they're found to be treasonous, uh, you know what to do. You know, that's the law that has been here from the beginning. That's what you do with traitors. You hang them high and you walk away. Now, it shouldn't be for me to have to lecture this country on what, you know, what to do. These are values that basically transcend left and right. Well, I don't know about left, because the left seems to want to commit suicide. So, you know, let them go to their own country somewhere, or an island, and let them all commit suicide. You know, I don't care. I just want them away from me. And, yeah, CPC police, I just crash my, uh, my, if I'm out there and have a shopping cart, I just crash the cart into them. You know, I'm sick of them. You know, uh, just get away from me. Now, we've done a lot of talking about um, gang stalking and things. Well, there's nothing else. I mean, Putin's going to retaliate, and I, and I got the word last night, tactical nukes, and that's really scary because, you know, that's, that's, that's dangerous stuff, but I get that, and uh, right now it's cruise missiles, but, you know, the, once you get something like this going, you know, here's the other side of it. It's hard to turn it off, but on the other hand, we have no choice. Uh, the other thing is Obama needs to be arrested. I don't think he's sane. I think he's insane or he's mentally ill. He needs to be tested for that. You know, he, he's, he prevaricate, you know, he's, he's um, not a leader. He goes this way and that way and up and down, and it's very unstable. And uh, more and more people are, are, are noticing that he's crazy and he needs help. You know, so my, my, in my view, he needs to be removed because he's not a commander-in-chief. He obviously destroys everything he touches uh, through his incompetence. It's not just a plan. 
It's just that he's, you know, demon-possessed, whatever. Yeah, I guess so. Maybe a mental hospital couldn't help him. Probably wouldn't. But he definitely needs a deliverance. He's definitely uh, uh, double-minded and, and unstable. That's all. You know, trying everything he can do to lead the country into to defeat while he's saying that he's, by every measure, he's succeeded. Uh, that's not normal. Um, you know, a lot of people notice it, not just Republicans, I don't think. But obviously, uh, there needs to be some kind of a change and right now. Right now, he's been marginalized. He's kind of like a Jimmy Carter do-nothing kind of idiot. And um, that's probably a good place for him right now. Uh, there is no secret strategy where he comes out ahead on this. Uh, can't imagine his legacy. Can't imagine his library. Can't imagine any of it. I know there'll be one in Chicago and one in Hawaii. There, there'll be more streets named after him and everything else than probably any other president in history for the worst president in the history of the United States. There will be more uh, cheering and everything else because he's black, or part black, but black enough so that, you know, to, to try to, you know, that there's been an overcoming of this horrible 400 years of awful treatment and everything else. And I agree, blacks have been treated horribly. And, um, you know, and gang-stalking victims have been even, treated even worse, especially when they commit suicide. They're not here anymore, ashamed to even be alive. Oh, but well, we don't talk about that. We just talk about uh, this other thing. Well, I wish I could say to them, I, you know, there was an incident I was recalling in, you know, three years ago when I went to the Sweetwater Gear Fest. And some of you are musicians, you've heard of Sweetwater Gear Fest. I would recommend you all go. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. If you, you know, you've, Nam and, uh, 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 Nam is, uh, in Anaheim is a to the trade, you know, so you have to be a vendor or something to be there. But you can go to GearFest, or the other one I recommend would be AES, which is the uh, Audio Engineer Society. And last, I missed the one in New York. They just had theirs in downtown Manhattan on Halloween. I just, I have a thing about not flying around and doing stuff on Halloween. But, uh, or GearFest. It's, it's, it's going to have more vendors, more people, and all the people are very accessible and you know, it was a chance for me to talk to people that made the gear I have, and I could meet the guy that started the company. And, you know, a lot of the gear I have was made by hand. You know, it's hand soldered, hand, you know, components are put in by hand. My Poltec EQs, for example, were made in, uh, you know, when the guy started up the Poltec company again. Uh, some of these early ones were made in a garage. <clears throat> you know, I think now there's there, there's a warehouse, there's a factory and everything, and they're more in demand. But it's, it's you know, they're all, these are handmade the people that, are doing this are you know really worth meeting and 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 you know it's wonderful that there's an analog you know revolution going on and people realize those mixes from the past um, you know they haven't been rivaled since and uh, you know in terms of a, there's a certain vibe people are going for so there's a you know I talked to this guy to, I took two guitars in to be fixed up I have a a Gibson acoustic and then I have a um, a Lakeland bass, and I played the Lakeland bass on the last track we did. Uh, shoot, I can't remember the name of that track. Trish, what's the name of that track we just did? I'm now I'm looking into it as a new track. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't remember. Well, it, it's 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 uh, okay. Children of the Damned. Okay. Oh, okay. Children of the Damned, which is. Uh, I really got to blow off some steam, and Rich Keltner came up with the track, and then I added some drums to his drums, and um, sounds like one drummer, though, yes, because I'm a good drum designer, but I added drums there, and then I, I played bass, which you've never heard me play, and I needed some, I, you know, when I'm listening to the playback, I really wanted to do something with more with the bass, and I wanted a more sharp tone and everything, and, and uh, you know, so I started working on it, and took it down there to a place here in town called the Candyman, which is uh, which is a great place. Another recommend for people if they have guitars and they need help and whatever. It's, a, it's just a great place to go. And now they have all these amps in there. And I was like, wow, you've got a lot of amps, cool amps, orange amps and, you know, all, all kinds of just cool, cool bass amps and Mark bass, all kinds of stuff. And I, I was asking, well, what the heck's going on here? He goes, well, there's just analog revolution. I mean, everyone's getting into analog, you know, more and more. Miking those amp cabinets, you know, you know, uh, getting away from kind of like this whole sort of digital realm on stage, you know, they cater mainly to live 
players, but also people who record. And, and uh, so anyway, there's this big stampede to analog, and the, like he was, this guy down there was saying that he was, he had gotten you know 1960 whatever you know getting rid of digital components within the within the guitars, in the um, electric guitars and basses and things. So I've noticed it across the board. I think what people are wanting is, you know, I think in 1980 or so when we started going to digital, I think people really feel that with that limitation in headroom, that lack of warmth, that the digital realm, the digital realm is not warm. It's a cold environment. And so I feel that people just really want something real. That's, and I think that's what a lot of this analog thing is. Even if they sound the same, they just want that warmth, that, that they just want that, you know, warm person next to them rather than an icon. And in, in our society, where we've become so separated, you know, from one another and so divided by the digital realm of, of you know, online and the internet, you know, a, a real human being to talk to is something so rare because it's just an email or it's a, a message. And it's, it's just really, uh, I think people are just, you know, they've gotten to that point. I mean, they're, they're scared for their lives. They're scared that the terrorists are going to come in here because Obama's bringing them in. Well, you know, he tried to bring Ebola, and he'll do whatever he has to do to uh, to get the job done. And this last year has proven to going to be a doozy. The people here are going to suffer quite a lot. And I'm so sorry for all of you, but we told you in 2008 what you were getting into, and that it was a uh, a revolution. And you didn't, you know, most people didn't believe it. We, you know. Uh, a lot of what you get right now, a lot of the unemployment's by design. And the suffering people are going through is, you know, over 30, they've never been more miserable. This is by design. This is social engineering. The more miserable that Obama can make you, which he's doing on purpose, by the way, uh, the better, you know, the more implementation of the social programs goes through because people that are miserable are more docile, easy to, easier to handle. And, you know, eventually it's the replacement and ratic ratification of uh, indigenous Americans to be replaced with other populations, which is why they wouldn't really want to bring the, you know, the migrants here to get those replacements underway, the Chinese and here to run the uh, factories and such, to revive Detroit and these other places, and to, you know, to rev the engine up again once the useless eaters of America are gone and eradicated from the earth. Um, you know, by attrition by low birth rates, by everything they've tried to do to engineer these people out of existence while they're encouraging high birth rates with the Muslim, uh, you know, uh, conquerors, I guess. And then, you know, eventually it's a secular society. So it's, it's, it's kind of hard to see right now. But uh, some people say, well, there, there won't be a nuclear war here on this soil. Well, what there will be on this soil is a continued, um, for example, let me just give you one example. Okay, like up in Michigan, you have like, you know, Islamic towns almost, you know, and, and there there's lots of, there's ISIS training camps around, you know, in, in Mexico and the United States. Those all have to be eradicated. They have to be uh, put out of existence. So right there, you got war on the soil of the United States. I mean, just with that alone. And that's the war that uh, I believe Obama and the left want to wage. They want to wage a war using radical Islam to do the do the dirty work for them. And that's why they train them and costume them and make films of beheadings and everything else to horrify people to, into being stunned to not being able to do anything. And so, but there's another faction fighting against the old stodgy Obama plan, which is basically the ongoing generations of Masons. And, and he's a Mason. And so they're, you know, this is Masonic. <laughs> and... Um, People say, well, how are the Jews figuring? Well, it's, it's, I said it's Masonic, you know, it's Satanic. So whether they're Jews or whether they're Catholics or whether they're, they're no, it's a Jewish conspiracy. Uh, well, the Jewish conspiracy is the Christian conspiracy. The, the bad guys that are running the churches and running, the, running the, the industry, if you will, are Satanic. And, you know, the, the, so the leaders of God are Satanic, belong to Satan. And they've infiltrated and taken over. Yes, that's the conspiracy. There's only one conspiracy. It's Satan. That's it. It's all done by deception. That's it. You know that. That being said, it's very supernatural, very multi-layered, and very multi-dimensional. My life is extremely multi-dimensional, as is yours, but maybe you haven't noticed it yet. And I'm recalling back three years ago. <clears throat> remember Sweetwater? I, was, I mentioned that, and I'm coming back to my thread. 
Sweetwater uh, has a gear fest, which I said I highly recommend. And, um, you know, you go there and you can meet all the people that make, make your equipment. Like in my case, it's a lot of handmade equipment and stuff like that. I told you that. Okay, well, the thing is I had this experience there three years ago where suddenly the dimension shift and then there was this like that vibe of, you know, they all are coming at me from the future knowing something I don't know or some, where I'm headed leading me into a certain path. And then when, when we finally heard um, uh, in the end, I think it was Terry Bozio <clears throat> was there with his big drum kit and he did a concert with that. And then there was like um, Billy Sheehan, I believe, the bass player, and uh, I forget the guy on guitar, but they decided to jam and give everybody a treat to have a jam because we were all in the theater, and I was right in the middle of the theater, right in the center. And um, they played these songs, beginning with Jeff Beck's Going Down and, you know, Jimi Hendrix classic and Led Zeppelin thing, but it was all from my era. You know, and then, you know, this just happened last night where I, I was brought to my mind. It took me three years to deal with this. But it was like the dimension shifted and these songs were meant to trigger me, uh, for me specifically. And I know that sounds paranoid, but I'm going to show you how it's not in a minute. And, uh, and, you know, there were subtle things and signaling from people and stuff that, okay, it's on. You know what I mean? Now, I re realized that I would see those same people a little bit later, and they would not have any memory of what just happened, meaning, you know, the people were switched. Thousands of them <laughs> showing me it's more of a simulacrum, a sim simulation, a flight simulator type of thing. Anyway, these songs could not be mistaken for anyone else. They were for me. They were to trigger me back to a certain period in my life, the you know, 1969, 70, 71, which was the center of the warfare and where it really got bad with, you know, your gang stalking, which is multi, you know, multidimensional and it's interdimensional. I explained this to you because right there it was like the whole entire of Sweetwater, thousands and thousands of people and all that, it suddenly turned into this thing to where I'd be introduced to, by somebody or somebody else and then that happened. They looked like they were waiting for me from ahead in time. I recognize, I may, I may not be explaining it right, but I recognized the vibe. I recognized what happened. And I went into, not avoidance mode, but some kind of, my, I switched myself to where it didn't have any impact. And it took three years to finally deal with that. You know, it wasn't that severe, but I think probably at, by the time we got tonight, we were having dinner with friends and things there in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and probably drank a lot too much. I remember I sort of hit the bar at the Hilton, uh, afterwards, I guess I, you know, I was throwing it back with, you know, by the time I got to dinner, I probably uh, went a little too far. I know that uh, <laughs> we did. And that sort of put an end to the, uh, to whatever weirdness there was, I put an end to it. But anyway, um, yeah, no, I don't recommend that as, as a way to cope with this uh, situation because you'll just turn into an alcoholic and that's, you know, then that becomes a whole other problem that you got to deal with. But I, I mean, I understand people that self-medicate because of this issue. I certainly understand. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not judging. You know, I'm just saying, well, the right recommendation is to, you know, not have it master you, but to master it, which is, in the case of drugs, for example, just don't do it. And in the case of uh, legal liquor, well, that's a drug too. I would just, you know, but I've been guilty of it. So I, I can't, you know, I can tell you what, what I would rather tell myself, which is knock it off. I've got no point now where I have to knock it off. Well, I had some problems, too, with my lungs. I quit smoking, you know, a while back. I don't even know how long it's been now, but it's been, <laughs> as you can hear, I've, <laughs> you know, issues. But I had, you know, but it's been, uh, I guess, about a month ago. You know, what happened is I got word from uh, Rob, who came here to upgrade my studio, and he's from Sweetwater as well as a rep for JBL and, you know, a studio designer and has his own company and everything, but he's, uh, he is a, an attache of Sweetwater at the very least. Anyway, he came here and, um, he told me that my, the pots of, you know, the, the knobs that you turn, the pots were, like he turned one and would go, <laughs> make this key sound, that's key, ka 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 sound. And that is, um, he said, you're smoking in here. I go, yeah, yeah, I've been smoking in here. 
He goes, well, that's it, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not going to, you know, that you, you got to cool it or, or you're going <clears> to <throat> have to have somebody fix all these pots, you know. I'm like, really? I didn't realize. And there's like tons of knobs in there. So I didn't really realize that. Well, you know, I took it to heart and I realized, well, what am I, I've been sneaking these cigarettes from Trish and then building up and building, you know, pretty soon I'm, I've got a full kind of a habit going. Well, so I cooled it that day. You know, I stopped because I used to get in there with an espresso and, and a cigarette and kind of sit on the mix and chew my cud and, you know, see what's going on. And, you know, uh, it, it made it easier to concentrate. But, I mean, the payment is, is well, the gear was suffering. So I stopped and, like, it's so funny. <clears throat> it's just like lungs. Mine will recover. I have other issues with lungs right now. But anyway, it will, it will, within a month, none of that static sound uh, when turning pots, none of that uh, was there anymore. It all went away. And so I just, you know, I put a fire under me. I just said, you know, I'm not going to, you know, borrow cigarettes, bum cigarettes, catch a sweat. I'm, I'm stopping. This is it. This is, you're not fooling anyone when you do that. When you're bumming cigarettes, you think because you don't have your own pack, you're not smoking. You, you are. So I finally had to man up and, and knocked it off, and I'm very grateful. I feel much better, and my studio is much cleaner, and, and it's nice not to hear that static sound. So I got the word, and, you know, that, see, that's just one example. Anyway, back to this incident that occurred where the whole thing went off, you know. It was like those songs, and I can't tell you, there was like this Jeff Beck, Cody, Cozy Powell thing, you know, from that was a very important but very obscure album from my time. And they started off with that. Then Jimi Hendrix, then, you know, it was just like these songs were songs that were very influential of me at a certain time in life between 1969 and 71. And that's when I was having tremendous troubles. I mean, you know, you're talking about like the whole city turning on you and then all of a sudden it isn't and then it is. And, you know, scary stuff. You talk about gang stalking, I've been through such a thing where it's so massive as to defy even anyone's sense of reality. You know, but it's all the same thing. You know, I mean, you it's the guy. They're, they're all, you know, you turn on the radio and then someone says something directly to you. They go, well, that's psychotic. No, no, because later on you turn it on and it doesn't happen you know what i mean it's it's when this thing shifts interdimensionally that people are changed and so all the people i see aren't the ones that were there before they can argue that they were but that's fine they they are there but they're not in my space it's a personal attack on me and the songs are tailored just for me uh, i maybe i can't explain it to any other way that makes me sound crazy but i mean you know this was something it, if if it if that were not the case or if there were not a tra trauma involved a triggering okay that occurred i would not it would not come up in my consciousness in the middle of the night for me to have to deal with and clear out the delay was 3 years you know through you know 3 uh you know let's see 1 2 3 3 and a half years or so is the delay on that. And then I had to deal with it because I didn't deal with it back then. What happened is I went into bubble mode and I just sort of floated through and, you know, kind of got through it even though there were, you know, weird looks and, you know, in other words, people were behaving as if they knew something that I didn't know and um, strangers tuning into me when they shouldn't know me at all, almost like as if they knew me and they had it. It's like, oh, hey, Zeph, you know, that kind of thing. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going, oh, jeez, I'm in a kind of a trouble here. And then, you know, the, the day after, of course, it was gone, and none of that was happening. And this is the kind of thing that I've been talking about from the beginning. Now, it manifests as people coming into your house. It manifests as them doing electronic surveillance. It manifests in them, uh, they could put implants in you if you go to the doctor. It's Yes, it all, all that's going on, too, at the same time. Yeah, it's working. All that's going on, too, at the same time, on a smaller, more minute, minutia level, that all those earmarks of that stalking is happening, too. But then the wider level is, it's, it's universal to you. It's everything and everyone at the same time, which is impossible, yes, impossible, unless 
It's interdimensional, a, a manipulated dream, a manipulated lucid dream. Something along that, those lines is the only way that it could actually happen. And that's what I think we're dealing with is, is for our waking reality. That's how I got to that conclusion, or not conclusion, that hypothesis uh, really, it's you know to, to it, you know when there's more knowledge, we'll we'll improve the hypothesis. But that we live in this kind of simulated world that's manipulated from outside that that is that is truly a gauntlet or a test. But all the other earmarks of it, you know, being beamed. Uh, how about microwave weapons? How about the fact that I'm living someplace? The guy across the street has an infrared that he says he's watching us in the house. We're across right across the street. I see the infrared one day, and I see two cameras, one on one end of the house, one on the other end of, like, where his garage is and the, and the thing, you know, and, and the infrared. Then I go up hiking around behind his house just because I want to see if I can. And I look on the roof, and there's nothing there. Others see it, too. And then it's not there. Then it's, that it never was. It was there, and then it wasn't there. Okay, and then, so if, if it's psychosis, <clears throat> it would have to be several people verifying the same thing and then also verifying that it's not there. How it's there one day and got, well, maybe it comes up from inside the garage, I don't know. But I think I understand because it only appeared there when that shift would happen, that interdimensional shift where the people looking at you out their windows, following you, uh, driving by the place, vans kind of pulling too close, almost like they want to throw you in a van. All kinds of really horrific things happening. And, uh, you know, big things. I mean, with me, it was big. It was, it was, it was uh, epic, you know, epic. You know, me versus Los Angeles or something. You know, everywhere you go, everyone you see, right, involved. Oh, you could, if you were gonna, if you were a shrink, you could go to town with this full-blown psychosis. It's the whole city. Oh, it's the whole world. You fly to Maui to escape, and the, the guy at the bar, hey, we know who you are. You know what I mean? And then they're, they're yeah, that was, it's 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 that same mechanism, <clears throat> wherever you it it doesn't <clears throat> stop. Um, this thing in my throat only comes up when I'm on the verge of a truth. So I'm being manipulated from outside right now. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's so hard to get this out. You know that three podcasts of this couldn't get out because the, the, that the actual podcast was erased, erased, and then erased again, and then erased again? Do you realize that? This may be erased too. Maybe I'm not supposed to, to, to talk about this interdimensionality of the, it's stalking, but it's more like targeting not stalking, a better word is targeting. Um, cosmic targeting is an even better term to shame you into suicide, to shame you into you know, to, to being embarrassed for being born or even breathing. It's just horrific and it's a, it's a horror movie on steroids and I'm sorry about my, the fact that I have no, you know, that I'm being attacked at this very moment for <clears throat> I'm so sorry, folks. I'm so sorry this is happening to me during this critical time. It can happen to me. It will, but no, it doesn't happen. Do you need some water now? No, it doesn't matter if I have water or not. Sorry. It doesn't happen away from the microphone, ever. It's just unbelievable. How can you do a recording, have it recorded, hit save, and then it's, it, it was 57 minutes, it goes to 57 seconds. It's not possible. It's not possible, friends. And then again and again. And things like that in my life are... are um, very extensive and very, very documentable and extremely, um, <clears throat> God, even my shirt is constricting my throat, you know, which, which is like, okay, now the fabric is acting up in a certain way that, that is unnatural to the fabric. And so I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I, 
I just feel it's important to share this and I'm going to share it. But the idea of manipulating my throat like that is just, it's just terrible, terrible. And I rebuke that in Jesus' name, in the name of God. Jesus' name. I rebuke it and send it back to wherever it came from in Jesus' name. Now, to get to this point of talking to you by podcast, I paid a big price. I mean, but what were my crimes? Zero, zilch, nada. Nothing. Why is it when I love them, they hate me? Because there's no reason for that, except it's just pure punishment. Why did when I was, uh, you know, when I was uh, in a therapeutic situation, there was one guy that came up to me and he, he said, the whole purpose of your life is to suffer. So he'd laugh, suffer, 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 ah, 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 out of the blue. And uh, so, you know, my heart goes out to you. I, I realize I'm beleaguered. I've explained this to people. I am no hero in this. I'm just verifying with others, triangulating on the information into what exactly it is. Uh, I know that nobody has exactly all the answers as to what it is. But one thing is for sure. I didn't create it. It is real. I remember this bar we went to here in Santa Fe where, you know, we're down there and they started in. All of a sudden it shifted, boom, and then they were all in character. And, the, and they were all interacting with us in a very negative way. When I left, the, the, the guy outside goes, you know, Elvis has left the building, another part of the PSYOP, another part of the, uh, the attack, outside who had no priv was not privy to the conversation at the bar. So all completely um, in sync and coordinated uh, cosmically. And then the next day it wasn't there anymore. What is that? Now, they tell me they know what it is, and they get manipulated all over the place, but I can tell you this. People I know might be there sitting in front of me, but they're not the same people that I really know. And then the next day, they are. And once you start seeing that end of it, then you'll stop the gang stalking term, and you know you can keep your TI term, but I mean, it takes on different meaning then. And... Um, well, you know, I've survived it, but I mean, it didn't, you know, there were times I tried to kill myself and different things like that because I, I, just, I, I just felt so ashamed of being alive that I, that I didn't want to bother. All these good people are having such a wonderful time in life. I just thought that, you know, maybe if I got out of the way, they could just keep enjoying themselves and they wouldn't have to worry about me anymore. To which they cackled and laughed. To which if I, if I succeeded, there would be high fives all around. These are jackals. These are not human beings. These are, these are not even jackals. I mean, at least that's more noble. These are, these are perverted, uh, dimwit, slave idiots who, who actually are just taking up space. You know, whatever the hive does, they do. They have no, they have no mind of their own. God help their children. And, you know, I'm here to warn prophetically that the wheels are going to come off this thing in America. It's going to be every man for himself. It's going to be really bad. It's getting that way now, pretty much. But it just takes one little matchstick, one little terror attack, one little Paris moment. And, um, you know, of course, there'll be a, a, a confiscation of guns and things like that. But, I mean, you know, and the whole thing goes up. You know, the balloon goes up. And uh, they would probably rather do that than have a nuclear World War III on this soil because what they want to do is preserve the factories and the places and the houses and all that for the replacements to come in. You heard it years ago, replacement. Govinda remembers that and talks about it on his podcast on occasion. The fact that, you know, he, he, he does acknowledge that I, that I got that and I tried to share it. And he also acknowledges, he'll be here in two days for 20 on 20, by the way. He also, if, if you want to check out Govinda, he's on a video with Jakari Jackson right now from the Alex Jones channel. Uh, Govinda, talking about human slavery, he looks fantastic. Uh, with his, his suit and tie, I, I was, 
I was amazed at what a, what a successful looking. I was like, they don't know you're a lamb. Oh well, Chikari is too. So, <laughs> but it's so God obviously wanted me to see all this stuff, and He wanted to communicate to me what it was. So when it started going on at, you know, because I didn't want to go on at Sweetwater at the Gear Fest because I was really having a great time. My daughter was there with me and she was getting drums and uh, <clears throat> some electronic Rollins to play in her apartment in, in Italy. And um, I was talking to people, I was meeting people that were making the gear I had in my rack. And, you know, it was just really having a good time. I met the, the people at Manly and and uh, I was enjoying that, and they took my picture, and I was enjoying that, and I got to play with all kinds of synths and meet the people that actually made the synths, and I was enjoying that, and, you know, having a good time, pretty much. It was like a kid in a candy store. But then this thing happened. And goodwill to everybody, you know, goodwill all the way. And goodwill still all the way around. I don't, you know, I'm not blaming anyone there for any of this thing that happened. Even though they, the, their behavior changed toward me, everything changed. And then I realized that I'll have to deal with this, you know, the Lord took me out of the equation and removed me. I was there, but I wasn't there, if you know what I mean, and walked me through. So, you know, we were going to deal with it three and a half years later when finally, you know, I could cope and then, you know, deal with the trauma that occurred and, you know, and clear it, right? You clear it by acknowledging it happened, number one. Those of you who've been rape victims or, you know, victims of crime and you, you keep having PTSD and reliving it in dreams and, yeah, so I have those dreams too, you know, and I, and so there was a three and a half year delay, but that three and a half years, it took that much more time to be able to understand the D, the, the non-personal nature of this so you don't have a, you blame humans, you, right, because it wasn't them. And that's the best way I could describe it. I'm, 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 I am serious. That's the way it is. Uh, it took three and a half years for me to get there. Uh, I couldn't deal with it back then, or I would have gotten mad at people that were manifesting. But you know, it's this like, oh, they all manifested at once. Yes, they all manifested at once, and pretty soon I was like Alice in Wonderland, you know, on this journey that was already pre-scripted for me. You know, I meet this one, and then I meet this one. They're all waiting for me, one after another after. And then it becomes this sort of, you know, we're here waiting for you. You know, and uh, it, all, it had the weird vibe of, remember the wicker man? It's like when they led that cop to his own death, and they, they, he wound up being a sacrifice. It had a vibe like that on it. So... It's scary. But the Lord wanted me to see the mechanism. That's why when I first saw it, I was very young. And then, and then I, you know, when I was like at that crucial age of 17, 18, 19, right in there, right where those songs came from that they played at the, that suddenly they had a jab. Here's what it was. Terry Bozio was doing his, his solo work on this massive drum set that takes two days to, to set up. And we watched him set it up, and it was just, took two days to do it. You know, it was like, they started working on it on like a Thursday, Thursday, Friday morning, and they got it done by Saturday afternoon, you know. Anyway, um, they did his solo, but then all of a sudden they were going to have a jam, which was not scripted, was not supposed to be part of the show. They just decided to have a jam with people that never played with each other before. And the guy on the guitar was calling out the tunes, specifically tunes that were meant for me. It was out of the blue this thing even happened that way. To trigger a memory, to actually to trigger back to a traumatic time and to trigger that whole... And it, it, it would have had God not intervened on my behalf, but it, to trigger that whole nightmare scenario of, 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 of they're all coming at you, they all know something else, they all have superior information because they're coming from the future at you and laughing at you in your plight or whatever. And, and so there were those songs designed specifically. There's no one else that would have gotten them the way I got them in the flow and the order that they were in. There's no one else there out of thousands of people that that would have occurred to. There were people there that were from that era and stuff, but it wouldn't have, it wouldn't been, it wouldn't have been that. It wouldn't have had the same impact. 
it was exact, exactly what was needed. So now, three and a half years later, I'm dealing with it. No, no, I'm not blaming anyone. I, you know, I suppose, like I say, I drank too much to, you know, kind of try to put, you know, switch dimensions. I do not recommend that, by the way. Uh, it, it kind of, it was okay by the next day, and, you know, it's just like it always happens, you know, it's, and, and, and then it's sort of like back to normal. And, but that dimension that I was in is pure hell. There is just no way to describe it. It's hell. It is hell. And um, it's so supernatural. So many things are happening. There was gear that I saw, things there that were not of this world, just there to, 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 to let me know that, you know, this is, that it wasn't there, but then it wasn't there the next day. You know, there's, like I say, it's like that, that infrared on that guy's roof. It was there, and then it wasn't there. You know? And uh, so I, I don't know what to tell you. I just know that it's, the, the kind of thing doesn't happen too often because, like I say, what did the Lord do? He took me and he took me into a cocoon type of thing and just walked me out. It, was, it just had no effect. It just, I was like, it was like Teflon, except that three years later I had to deal with it now because now I understand what it is and the mechanism much better than then. So that's why the delay. I hope this is helpful. I mean, I'm really, I'm up against all these people online who keep screaming and pounding the table that it is terrestrial. It isn't what I'm saying. They're going crazy. Out, out, damn spot, they're saying. Well, what are you so guilty of? You're guilty of being a perpetrator is what you are. When they push that narrative, they're trying to stop you from healing. Just a heads up. I know this is a lot for you to get your mind around, but if you've ever listened to a TI talk, they do sound psychotic. And um, I know they're not. I know this is something that really is happening, and they're describing something. And the reason that the worlders don't say anything about it is because they don't want, if they, if they do, they get in trouble but they also find themselves being unwitting participants in attacking you. And they don't want to, I know that, but they have to. So there is that level too, where they, yes, they are engaged in hurting you in order so their family won't be hurt. And they pit us against each other. Then every once in a while, a target goes crazy and shoots up the joint. Right? Because he thinks it's terrestrial. He doesn't understand the interdimensionality of it and the supernature of it. And as a result, he wants to deal with things in a terrestrial, carnal manner when it has nothing to do with the carnal situation. It has everything to do with the ultimate spiritual situation, which is real reality as opposed to this simulated reality that we live in and agree, to agree upon. But it is, nothing, uh, of, of, it is nothing of a continuous or contiguous nature. Uh, history is not history. Nothing is what it seems. Now, the only way I know to cope with it, like there, it's, it's the Sweetwater thing. It happened, and, and I, you know, walked through it. How could I do that? I should have stopped and freaked out, right? No. And I knew it was happening. Even when people, people were saying weird trigger words and things, I saw them doing it, and I realized, well, they weren't all trained by the CIA. So, I mean, you know, this is, this is interesting. They weren't themselves, ladies and gentlemen. That's the point. Now, I've tried, in as cogent a manner as I could, to try to explain something that is nearly unexplainable because it's, it's, it's very complicated. It's very um, difficult to detect. And when you do detect it, it the, the, the common reaction to it is fear and to run. And so with the Lord, that kind of thing stops. You don't run and you don't have fear. So you see, if that doesn't happen, then it really can't attack you 
ultimately. It, it starts up, but it doesn't get too far. It happened again in Walmart recently. Um, I was in the aisle looking for a, a non-fluoride toothpaste. And that's hard to find at Walmart. Most everything is fluoridated. <laughs> and, and it's there because Trish found it later on, and I, I couldn't find it. I just was blinded to what I was looking for. But in that aisle, in my hesitation, came shopping carts knocking into me and, you know, people talking and laughing and making, you know, this guy whistling a couple things over and all kinds of noises and sort of trying to cluster it around me a little bit. So I stood my ground and I kept looking even though I didn't find. Eventually I just sort of swept these people away with a sweep of my hand. Like, get the F out of my way, idiot. You know what I mean? I mean, you take, I, sometimes I'll take on that demeanor of being tough, you know, but because, you know, this is a war, right? No mercy, right? And, uh, you know, and, and, and then, of course, that works. And then if you, if you have this attitude that you're, you could care less whether they, what they say, if they laugh, they, if they point, if they, whatever they do, you know, it's like, it's got nothing to do with me. And as long as you understand that and you're strong in the Lord, you know, you just, like in that case, it got diffused. Before it got started, it was shut off like that. And the people, I looked at them, you know, and they all look confused for a minute. You know, and they kind of, they don't know each other, you know, and they kind of dif diffused uh, into the story their own ways, and it just all kind of disappeared. But it did come up just like somebody watching me through their eyes behind some sort of machinery that's able to manipulate them and come right up into my face. You know, it's a demonic thing, right? Sometimes, like, a demon will jump out of a person and start talking to me. So I talk to the demon. I don't talk to the human. I don't talk to the host, no. So when I say they're parasites, I mean, the parasitical nature of this demonic thing takes hold of the people who agree to serve the world system or whatever and um, who give consent to the dragon and whatnot. Again, give consent to pure evil. And what happens is they get used by these things, you know. So they become parasites feeding on the host, which is, the host is Jesus. The host is the lamb. The host is God. The host is, right, they're, they're separated from God. They're separated by their consent. So they have to feed on something that, re that represents life. So that would be you. <laughs> and uh, you thought this whole time you were some awful thing. No, without you, they wouldn't be here. You actually keep them going. You're actually helping them to see another day so they can repent one day. And some of them, you know, actually wake up and do repent. I don't know, you, you know, which ones. But some actually do. It's amazing. But, you know, so, so that's the thing. Now... Um, I haven't been able to get to all your emails. I've, I've gotten to some. I haven't. I just saw one yesterday about somebody that's uh, you know in trouble and they need help or whatever. I, I you know I do what I can. I just can look at the emails when God leads me to look at them. I'm sorry I'm behind. I'm sorry I can't respond. And if you're offended by that, then uh, you know just listen. I mean, if if the podcast are helping you, just listen to that and don't just understand. I'm a flawed human being. I'm under siege as well. You know, I'm having to, uh, you know, forge my way through here and, uh, you know, find a way through this thing, too, through all these, you know, incidents. I mean, I, I'm, you know, the Lord's provided for me. I'm, I'm doing fine in, you know, every way, but, but you do have <clears throat> this kind of limitation that I deal with, you know. I'm grateful for having a roof and, you know, when I didn't have one, I, I had something. I mean, I've always had a little, I've always had, you know, I've, I've always felt God's hand of provision around even those times where I, you know, things were very lean and, you know, then, then they weren't. I, but I never really worried about it. So I never really, I had, no, I would have, but I had all these other concerns that um, seemed to take up my time so that whether, you know, what whatever I had in the bank or not in the bank or whatever, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't the focus because that's not. It's never been the focus in my life. It's. It's. I have plenty on my plate that I've got to straighten out so that I can cope on a day-to-day -day basis without you know 
turning it in on myself and 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 you know and and you know I have to you now want to keep a good attitude and I want to be able to I, I told someone the other day so look I need to be able to love I need to be able to be loved you know to to not be so guarded that I can't be loved you know I need to love and be loved and and it, when I talk about love in that way I'm talking about unconditional agape love I'm not talking about the world's love of you know the Eric Clapton song you know when I give what was that called? Let It Rain. The <laughs> horrible little song. Yeah, when I give my love. Well, you like it because they, like another friend said, they sprinkle like dust on it, you know. So, of course, you're going to like it. Oh, I love that song. Yes, because they have like dust on it, so you're going to like it. They put hate dust on mine, <laughs> so you'll hate it. <laughs> you know, it's very simple. The whole thing is simulated. It's all rigged, man. It's all rigged. <laughs> And when you see that, oh boy, that's liberating and 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 horrifying at the same time. You know, uh, uh, I'm sure I've been here before, and probably some, as you know, in a very worldly. You know, obviously I'm the opposite now, but I'm, I'm sure I've enjoyed the fruits of the earth. If there was such a thing as reincarnation, I'm sure I've enjoyed it and, and abused myself and abused it. And now this is kind of a penance thing in a way. I, I Actually, I don't even know. I don't know. It's some kind of spin cycle job, recycling job. That's the tunnel of light that people see. They're getting those souls back into the hopper, you know. But I'm, I'm not sure, you know, the whole of the whole picture. I know that's true. But I know that people like me, we don't deal with the tunnel of light. You know, we don't. If I saw it, I would never go into it. You know, just put it that way. It's just not me. You know what I mean? My Lord is is where I go. And that's kept me, you know, saying, you know, I've done my best today to try to tell you about a reality that's really real, you know, and it's been, it's, I've had three goes at it this morning. From early in the morning, I've got a mix to do here that uh, we're going to release today from Australia. I've done a remix on this, this chap's great... Uh, track he's a very kind of almost like an edm track and, and and it's it's just kind of it's a cool thing and we worked you know kind of extensively on it and i'm just going to deliver the final uh master to him and then then he says he you know i'm free to release it myself and so i will put it everywhere because i mean you know it was it was definitely a equal 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 collab but it had been i think released before anyway bottom line is this whole thing, you know, it um, every once in a while it's alluded to in movies and like the movie The Game tried to get at this a little bit, but they, what did they have? A big room where everyone was being coordinated. See, that was David Fincher's vision to have a big room where everyone's coordinated. No, it's, you know, that's impossible, first of all, and improbable that they would be like that. No, it's interdimensional. And when the new dimension comes in, they're all scripted. Everyone you see it, everywhere you guys did a song about it. It's very powerful stuff. I don't blame people in the world that conform to the world because they're afraid of the consequences of going against this machine. Hey, I don't blame you for chickening out. You know, actually, it's like you didn't chicken out. You went ahead and took the bait and went with it. But then, but that was the that was the least painful option because otherwise it would have all come down on your head. So, so you kind of took the easy way out and you know, you've been happy up till recently and now you're very unhappy because you see how the whole thing is coming, crashing into uh, reality and you realize you've been part of something that uh, you don't and you never did want to be part of, but then you're justifying it by saying, but how else was I supposed to live? You know, I didn't have any other way. So I understand, you know, I'm not, I'm just... Uh, I'm, yes, it's false the way you're living, and yes, it will come to an abrupt, horrifying end. Yeah, it 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 it, it something I wouldn't want any human being to experience. But unfortunately, most in this country will. But they they have to have an awakening. But it's going to be a, a rude awakening, because they have to understand. It's like a, a corrective mechanism to show you that that way that seemed right to you is the way of hell, and not just death, but hell. It's a supernatural highway to hell. And hell is not somewhere where the band ACDC would want to go, believe me. 
because it's 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 not like uh, yeah your friends are there and you're partying out there is no partying it's every man for himself it's everything against everyone it's 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 a uh, it's a situation that could turn that we've seen on the earth from time to time yeah nobody there is having a good time nobody in that situation of hell on earth is having a good time nobody in that situation is partying up and just glad to see the other fella there you know so they could have some fun nobody is uh kicking up their heels and saying they were right thank god how smart they were no there's none of that <laughs> no, none of that no it's more like if you ever get another chance again you you swear whatever the gauntlet is whatever you got to go through you're going to just go through it and get the f out of here out of here and don't come back. Don't look back. Don't come back. Just Sodom and Gomorrah is just a metaphor for the world system. Is all. I I mean, you know what I mean by that is I, no. I don't mean sodomy. I mean extreme supernatural evil. I mean murder. I mean witchcraft. I mean you know, I mean um, supernatural. You know, spiritual slaves. I mean. I mean, you know, a, 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 a town of demon-possessed people, of zombies, you know, that's what I mean. Whether they poke each other here or there or the other place, I don't care. See, that's never been my focus. You know, I'm talking about the big picture here. But I think that's a very good story, especially when Abraham is pleading for, for more time out of his own compassion that did God wouldn't destroy the whole town, the whole city for, you know, if there's 10 righteous there. But below that, you know, there's a point, in other words, a mathematical probability of what will trigger God's wrath, let's say upon this nation or upon the world. And we're getting dangerously close to that. I just read a statistic the other day that talked about how witchcraft and paganism are on the rise in America. And you can thank the PC police, Soros, Obama. They want to bring the paganism and the witchcraft in bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, and unfortunately, um, you know, what I think is going on there cynically, and this is just, this is very sophisticated in a way, and probably wrong, but here's my thought. He wants to bring the wickedness and decadence in so high that God has to take out the people of America and kill them all to do his dirty work. What he'd like to do, he wants to get God to do by proxy, by forcing them all into negative decadence that will trigger God's wrath. He knows it will be triggered, and he wants to sit back and go, See, I had compassion for you, but look what this psychopath God did. He killed you all. Is that the kind of God you want to follow? Amen? High five? <laughs> you bet. That's a pretty interesting observation, isn't it? Uh, that's the way that man rolls. He thinks, and he thinks like that. He's playing chess with God. He's trying, to, he's trying to get check and mate. Yep, he's filled with a satanic spirit. You bet he is. A high-level demon, that's right. Maybe the man himself could be. I certainly don't, you know, I'm not going to pretend to know all this stuff. But I will give you my impressions. And, um, you know, where the supernatural attack on you comes, where the targeting comes, you're dealing with this whole big supernatural, multidimensional um, thing, just like what Paul is saying in Ephesians 6. You've got to take that to heart, that, those scriptures there. Um, it's all spiritual warfare. You know, it's, it's, you know, yes, there is a, a component where they're discussing how they're going to get you. So they're going to all play their parts. They, they play theater on you. You know, you go to the class and then they're all in class waiting for you and they're going to play a trick on you. They're all going to tell you, you know, that there's going to be a field outing somewhere and you're going to go to that field, that, that thing that, you know, that, that thing where there was supposed to be a field outing, and there'll be a few, you know, maybe you're a girl, 
and there'll be a few guys there and they're going to rape you. You know, or something like that. I mean, that kind of thing does happen. You know, and, and, and or in this case, a spiritual attack. You go to the class and, you know, they, they say they're going to meet somewhere else. You go there and they're all waiting for you in a terrestrial manner, meaning it's, but that's also triggered by the other side anyway, and or, orchestrated and scripted. So you walk into the thing, they're all waiting for you, and they all start saying things like calling you by your nickname you had when you were a child where there's no way any of them could know that nickname, you know, that kind of thing to make you just basically become so afraid you want to run. And then they, they feed off your trauma. You start crying and they feed off you. I've seen them do it. As soon as you break into tears, they feed. They get really happy and really high. But even better, if you killed yourself, then they'd really be high. And I'm sorry, you know, they'll, they'll, be, they'll use the classroom, they'll use Starbucks, <laughs> they'll use the, uh, the mall, they'll use the, uh, the baseball game, you know, they'll use the dog park, you know, whatever. The dental office, you know. And uh, whatever else you're involved in, you know, your job, you know, your cubicle, things in your cubicle will be touched slightly, moved things. Um, and you're just trying to cope and you're trying to get through and you're wringing your hands. I can see you wringing your hands in your cubicle where there's like a red phone. I see a red phone and I see a, I see a, um, some sort of printer in there, and it's, it's kind of messy, and some pictures of your family. You know, I can see you in this cubicle, wringing your hands, and and just wondering who's on the other side of that cubicle at times. Hearing noises that don't quite make sense, that aren't quite human, and and sometimes having a real hard time of it, real hard time coping. Yeah, and and you know, hopefully people don't find out you're nuts. Well, I'm not, I'm not, I actually have a, you know, a very sound mind and a very, um, I've put this thing into perspective. And, you know, and they say, well, when it happens, that's actually a trick of your mind. You actually need help. It's like, no, I don't need help. I, believe me, I went through all that help stuff. Uh, nobody d knew anything. They all knew I was right. Everyone knows I'm right. Everybody knows I'm right, but they, it's, they, they can't go there because it scares them. But they're being led by the nose by it. So, a couple announcements. The Zeph Report has, uh, apparently, Angie has told me, my assistant, my loyal, trustworthy, uh, what do you call it, uh, roadworthy, who's been there the whole time, you know, just uh, making it so these podcasts can work and, you know, and social platforms work and everything. The Zeph Report. Uh, music, geopolitics, and spiritual issues has been going on since 2002. I think it's March of two, March 9th, to be specific. And we're going into our 14th, we're coming up on 14 years in, uh, in March, which is just right around the corner, just a few months away from our 14th year anniversary. And she tells me we have, you know, yesterday we had 6,000 hits. And, and, you know, I know that's going to be a shock to you because we're so low-key. We do no advertising. We do nothing, you know. That's just one platform, honey. Oh, that's one platform. How much is it then on all the platforms? I don't know, but that's on Podbean itself. But there's another, there are other aggregate platforms, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's like, you know, tens of thousands of hits a day. You know, it's just ridiculous. And um, I haven't said anything. I haven't really followed it. So I've, I had no idea. I thought it was just you and me. But apparently people are tuning in from around the world in a really big way, and yet we're the best kept little secret on the web because, you know, not everybody is ready for this podcast. I mean, I, I know that. For me, it's been, it's been a way to put stuff out there and cope with you. I, the, I, the few things I regret, and one of them is I just can't respond to all of you. I'd love to... I just figure we'll meet each other one day. You know, I just haven't been able to interact because I've been, you just have to understand, you do one of these podcasts and the rest of the day you're fighting for air. You know, it's just, you just aren't, there's a toll that it takes on you.
And I, I, I haven't really been straight with you on that. I guess you think it's just ta it's like flowing. Turn the tap on, it flows out. Turn the tap off, you're fine. Now there's a, there's, there's our, there's a, there's. What would you call the backlash from the pods, Trish? There's an oppression, yeah. Govinda's talked about it. I, I, you know, it just, it seems every time it comes in, I, you know, and Frankie's noticed it too, and he's, you know, because he's producing also for us on WWCR, and there's more listeners there. So it, it, it's been a, um, uh, so people say you have a Podbean, it, we, you know, it's not like we have our own website, we have a Podbean account, but we do get, like I say, Yesterday there were 6,000, and that wasn't even a pod up that day. And this one I predict will get even more just because you're never going to get anything like this anywhere else. When I wanted them to explain it to me, and I went to the professional Christian, they, you know, they have the books, and they have the seminars, and they're, you know who they are. Okay, I don't, I don't want to give names right now. I just try to stay out of that. Well, there's always, there's no reason for me to, but you know who they are. Um, none of them would explain this to me. You know, they just said, "Come to me with your problems, and I will help you," or something. You know, they wanted me to come to them with my problems so they could help me. They wouldn't just talk straight to me, and I always felt sad about that. But then I thought, "Oh my God, these are false shepherds. They're going to get in a lot of trouble." They're going to get their asses kicked, you know, in this next period. You're going to see them not be the strong leaders you're used to, but caving, like scared little whatever, screaming and crying and running. It's because they know they're not on solid ground with the Lord. They know that somehow they're not on solid ground with the Lord. And it doesn't get triggered, that, that thought. Until think till there's no way, you know, till it gets down to crunch time. So, well, you know what? I just pray the Lord straightens them out. I'm sure He will. You know, they came through all this through the system. Every one of those people is tied to the church system. I hope you understand that. They're pretending to be such mavericks and breakaways. They're not. Mighty men of God, I heard them call on someone's podcast. Let's see what these mighty men of God are up to. Mighty men of God? Where's a mighty man? I mean, there was Samson, and even he wasn't that mighty in the end. Who, where's the mighty man of God? Give me a break. Show me the mighty man of God, please. We are not mighty men of God. If you're of God, you're a meek little person, and you're trying to keep your head above water, you, you know, in, in, in the spiritual sense, there's a feeling of oppression and a feeling of, you know, it's coming, you're going against the grist, the, against the, the the grain there, and it's, 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 it could be rough, it could be beautiful too. I mean, days, you know, a lot of days are just beautiful, it, it, you know, a joy beyond expression. But when I had to deal with tactical nukes this morning, you know, that, that the, 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 these will start being employed more and more, you know, that, you know, just, you see it creeping into what it is, and you can, yeah, yeah you know, you can blame Obama, I guess, but, but really Obama symbolizes something, symbolizes the decadence and the God-hating of America, you know, that's what he symbolizes, uh, the failure of America due to the God-hating, which is the only reason America fails. And, um, you know, these people with their spoiled little brat children screaming and yelling in their university, they want it all paid for by mommy. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's really sad. But those same people are the politically correct God-haters. It, it's happened before. Back in my day, they burnt down half of UCLA, you know, I mean. You know, they're, they're, they're always going to be these malcontents who are going to complain about something. They were the, they're going to scream about something else pretty soon. I don't want to be a complainer myself, you know what I mean? But I do know this, this whole interdimensional warfare, spiritual warfare, uh, they want us to go against each other. They pit us against each other. That's why I don't take it personally. So I have an open relation. I 
In other words, somebody that had a mask on the other day that took it off and there was this thing happening. The next time I see them, I might be cautious, but I want to welcome them with open arms. You know, it's, 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 I, you know, I, I can do this because I know it's not personal. Even if it looks like they were being used, it may be a projection of what I think they are. See what I mean? So it may not be them at all, at all. And, and I may seem, you know, in another scenario they're going through, it may seem like I'm the one with the mask on that's coming out, taking the mask off and I'm an evil, grin, evil grinning, you know, demonic clown coming at them, you know. So it's, it's, yeah, it happens to between us, who are friends, too. And, you know, so we, we've got that aspect to where now you feel like you're really alone. And that's exactly, you know, ka they win. They get, that's part of this warfare, is to make you doubt your friends and doubt yourself and doubt everything so that you cannot be on any kind of firm foundation. You are on a foundation of quicksand and you're going to, you're drowning quickly and no one is coming to the rescue and your life is just terribly miserable. I'm here to minister to everybody. I mean, I don't care, you know, no, I have my thoughts about the, 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 the terrorist. Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously, you know, um, you know, I'll minister to any of them that you better repent right now uh, or you is going to be a parking lot, dude. Because you see, the powers that be have decided that ISIS has got to go. And I don't care how much hemming and hawing there is, the carnage is going to be real bloody coming up. And of course, the backlash, infiltrators, terror cells and whatnot, uh, all false flags, by the way, uh, will all be popping off too. <laughs> There's my word, popping off. The president saying, anyone who wants to pop off, about my policy in the Middle East, give it a little more time, you're going to work. It's like, what policy? You've been flip-flopping the entire time. Flip, 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 lie, 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 Thank you, sir. Yes. Good day, sir. We hate imperialism. Yes, uh, we have, you know. I'm not saying we're not going to get our hair must. No more than 20 million killed tops. Yeah. Quite. Well, it's okay. And for those of you sophisticates who've gotten beyond religion and beyond the Bible and beyond Jesus and Beyond all that mythology, as Jordan Maxwell pointed out to you so succinctly, welcome to your fight against the slaves. Who are you going to call on to help you? Me, God's in me. I can, I, I'm struck. You're going to do it? <laughs> Watch this cat get blown down. Oh, sorry. There you are on the ground. What are you going to do now, man? You going to call on God? No, I'm not. I'm God is with me and inside of me. I've, I don't need religion or Jesus or any of the rest of it. And I'm, you know, I'm going to get up and go again. But right now I'm scared to death, so I'm going to run away. What happened to God that was in you? The God, this nebulous kind of God that's like the force of God. The God force. What happened to that God force? Use the force, Luke. What happened to that God force? Ah, oh, yes, we ran into that a few years ago, the Christ Force. Yes, an elaborate trap. Another one, just for me, for little old me. Amazing. And what do they want? The demonic realm wants um, your consent to take your soul and inhabit you and run your life. And in exchange for that, you will get to belong to this sinking ship called Earth. Okay? Now, you don't have to be the lonesome loser. You can really be a part of the team. Aren't you going to come in for the big win? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Aren't you... Um, don't you love your country? Sir, yes, sir. Aren't you going to get on the team, come in for the big win? Everything is awesome when you're part of the team. Are you a team player? Sir, yes, sir. You love God? Sir, yes, sir. Now you're going to go to, down to, uh, you're going to give me uh, 100 push-ups for that one. 
God is a relative term. You keep your mouth shut about God. Sir, yes, sir. Do you love Satan? Sir, yes, sir. Good. Have some champagne. Uh, yeah. After you're done servicing me. <laughs> okay. Well, I had to throw that. It couldn't, it wouldn't be the Zeph report without that sort of thing. Uh, I had a really good one for Mr. Michael Donahue. Uh, of, I did a Zeph report yesterday that was so profane I couldn't put it up. So many F words and so much cussing that I, I couldn't do it. But, you know, it was me with my hair down, and I, I ain't going to put it up because... Well, I was really angry, you know what I mean? And, and I've now my anger calmed. But when I started thinking about what a great positive vibe I was in yesterday and how how this, you know, the, the, the geopolitics, all this, trying to rob me of those good vibes, trying to make me afraid that everything's over, it's not over till God says it is. So he's saying to me, play, play, play. You know, here we are in Vietnam, the Robert Duvall part, when he said, you know, you can either go fight or you can surf. So there were good waves there. So the guy, you know, they were out surfing while the, while the firefight's going on. You remember that in Apocalypse Now, right? Well, God's saying the same thing. You can either go fight or you can go play. I'd rather you play because then that blows people's minds. Yeah, but Lord, it has to be for real. It can't be me pretending to play. Yeah, you got to get into it. With full knowledge of everything else going on, you're still playing. How can that be? Most of the other cats that are playing, they're playing, but see, they don't know anything's going on. They're, they're in a delusion that somehow it's all going to be fine in the end, and they're in escape mode. I don't want you to be in escape mode. I want you to play anyway with eyes wide open. Sir, yes, sir! That's the way it looks to me on this F report. And here we're going to see if we can wrap her up. And uh, God bless you, each and every one of you. I pray that uh, this report finds you in good stead, and I pray for your blessing and your healing in Jesus' name right now. You're going to join me in a couple of days for 20 on 20. We're going to pray. We had anomalies happen last time. Strange things happen in the studio. Strange things happen with the recorder. Strange things. So please pray for us. And do check out that uh, video of Govinda. He looks so handsome. I mean, I have to say it because I'm, I'm as old as his dad, you know, so I can, I can say that, right? But, you know, he really makes me proud. He, I'm like, you've got to run for office. He looks, he's perfect. He looks like an actor, uh, you know, taking time off the set. I mean, it's, it's amazing. I don't say watch it for that. Listen to him talk about 2020. He's very relaxed, and it's a great format. It's good that him and Shikari do a great show together. It's a, it's, it's, it's a marvelous thing to do. It's a, definitely a big calling of God, and so please lend your support, and I will see you all next time.